The New York Giants have started their voluntary offseason workouts, and wide receiver Darius Slayton, he has not shown up, he is ready to hold out, and he wants a contract extension. We'll break that down on today's video, but the main course is this. The New England Patriots are open for business, according to their general manager, when it comes to potentially trading down from pick number three. So we're going to tell you what the Giants need to do to get up to number three, so they can select potentially Drake May. We also have quotes from Adam Schefter on the Giants and Drake May. But first, make sure you are subscribed to the channel because we're a week away from day one of the NFL Draft, and we're going to be live on this channel, and I want to see you there. So subscribe and turn your notifications on. Today's Giants Now video by Chat Sports is presented by 8sleep. Go to 8sleep.com slash chat sports and get $200 off plus free shipping. Invest in the rest that you deserve. We'll tell you more about our awesome sponsor, 8sleep, in a second. And we'll close the show talking about what Elliot Wolf, general manager of the New England Patriots, had to say about Drake May, as well as some Schefter quotes. But I want to start today's show focusing on a player that's already on this roster, but maybe he has played his last game. And that is Darius Slayton, the wide receiver who has really been the best wide receiver for this team for the past four or five years. Slayton has not shown up to voluntary workouts, so I'm not ready to fully call it a holdout of sorts, but he is looking for a new contract and he does want to get paid and he is not with the team getting ready for the 2024 NFL season. Slayton did sign a two-year, $12 million deal last offseason. So he is entering the last year of his current contract, and I completely understand why any player would be trying to get more guaranteed money when they only have one year left on their deal. We know that injuries are a major part of the National Football League, so I understand why Darius Slayton is doing that. On top of the fact that four out of the last five years, he has been the leading receiver for the Giants. This past year in 17 games played, he had 50 grabs for 770 yards, 15.4 yards per catch, and four touchdowns. We know what Darius Slayton is as a football player. He is a solid number two receiver, would be a really good number three receiver. He could put pressure on the back half of a defense. He could take the top off. We saw him do it with an 80-yard touchdown as well as a 70-yard touchdown in the final weeks of the regular season. And as you see on screen, he has been the go-to target, the number one wide receiver for the Giants since 2019, outside of the 2021 season when Kenny Galladay led the team in receiving yards with 521. That is brutal. Look, I don't blame Slate. I don't. Everybody knows that you have a short shelf life in the NFL. And when you don't have any guaranteed money coming after this year, aka you're on a one-year expiring deal, you should be trying to secure your value. And the NFL is all about that. It is about capitalizing on your value. And I'm sure Darius Slayton saw some of the other wide receivers that signed deals in free agency this past offseason and was like, I'm better than them. I want some of that money. You look at what some of the top receivers in free agency got this past spring. Calvin Ridley, four years, 92 million, 50 guaranteed. Darnell Mooney, three years, 39 million, 26 guaranteed. Gabe Davis, three years, 39 million, 24 million guaranteed. Curtis Samuel, three for 24 with $15 million guaranteed. I'm sure Darius Slayton is looking at Gabe Davis and Darnell Mooney and them getting 24 and $26 million and says, my stats are pretty comparable to them. Maybe I should be getting the type of bag that they got. And it also could benefit the Giants to an extent. Joe Shane could save $3.6 million in salary cap space this year if he were to extend Darius Slayton. That comes from over the cap. Push a little bit of the money that he's due now into future years. And you also get to keep a player that's been productive. He's been available. And I think he's a leader for this football team. And just not this past offseason, but the offseason of 2022, the Giants were going to cut Darius Slayton. And then they had him take a pay cut. Now it's his turn on the other side of the coin to try to get his money. I'm not mad at him, but I don't love this, to be quite frank with you. Should the Giants give Darius Slayton an extension? Should they give him a new contract? Let me know what you think. Type Y for yes, type N for no. My immediate thought when I saw this Darius Slayton news was, I don't hate using him as a piece of the pie when it comes to potentially making a draft day trade. I'm not saying Slayton's going to be able to get you to move up 25 picks or 30 picks, but 
If you add Slayton to a deal, maybe to the New England Patriots who need a wide receiver, maybe that can help bolster that offer and make it more appealing to get up to number three. The Giants also save $6.4 million if Slayton is traded prior to June 1st. So that's a lot of money. That's pretty much your entire rookie, rookie uh, class that you could sign. So I think Joe Shane will be active when it comes to looking for a trade destination for Darius Slayton. He may get a contract extension, or Joe Shane might just say, hey, you signed that deal last year, play out your contract, play well, and we'll get you paid in the offseason. It'll be an interesting, interesting couple of weeks for him. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because we're going to break it down if we get any more information. Also, coming up next, quotes from the Patriots general manager about being willing to trade down from number three. We've got quotes from Adam Schefter on the Giants wanting to draft Drake May. That's around the corner. But right now, i got to tell you about our proud presenting sponsor, Eat Sleep. Go to eatsleep.com slash chat sports. Get $200 off plus free shipping. Today's Giants Now video is brought to you by 8Sleep, the high-tech solution to your age-old sleeping issues. 8Sleep's Pod 3 cover slips right over your mattress, bringing heating and cooling tech that keeps you comfortable and sleeping deeper for a better, more restful night. I love 8Sleep because it has totally stopped my night sweats. I'm someone that even when it's 30 degrees outside, I have the AC on 60, fan on high, and I still found a way to sweat. That was until I got hooked up with 8Sleep. The pod cover will improve your sleep by automatically adjusting your bed's temperature based on your individual needs. The cover can be added to any bed like a fitted sheet and allows you and your partner to cool or warm your side of the bed as well as 55 degrees and up to 110 degrees. In addition to keeping you at the perfect temperature all night long, the pod also tracks your sleep and health metrics. On average, pod users see their sleep quality improve by 32% after just a month on the pod. The high-tech solution your age-old sleeping issues. 8sleep.com slash chat sports. Get $200 off plus free shipping. Invest in the rest that you deserve. Sleep is a major part of my life. Look, if I don't get good sleep, I'm going to be cranky. I'm going to be crying. I'm going to be upset. And you know what? 8sleep has changed my life. Go to 8sleep.com slash chat sports. Get $200 off plus free shipping. All righty, let's dive into it. What are we talking about? The New York Giants potentially trading up to the number three overall pick with the New England Patriots after the Patriots' de facto GM, Elliot Wolf told reporters this. This comes from Ian Rapport of NFL Network. He's open to a trade out of number three. Quote, we are open in the first round or any round. If the answer is picking one of the top four QBs at number three, he said, I think we'd be comfortable with that. Doesn't sound like a lot of conviction coming over from the people in New England. Sounds like they're open for business. And if they are, Joe Shane, you better be working that phone. Adam Schefter also said this. Again, I think if the right quarterback is there at six, and I think that could be Drake May, then I think the Giants could potentially have some interest. I also think they have other needs. Joe Shane has been very public about the fact that they have a lot, of a, a lot of needs to address. But it is hard to imagine that they would bypass the top wide receivers in this draft in favor of a QB unless the right guy happened to slide right to them. Did Adam Schefter just say he thinks Drake May is going to slide to number six? I, um, I don't know. It also sounds like the Giants aren't really looking to trade up per Adam Schefter, not willing to bypass the opportunity to select one of the top receivers to trade up for a quarterback. That was interesting. Also, Joe Shane, speaking to the media right now, said this. The expectation. That's a word that the Giants have been using a lot this offseason. The expectation. The expectation. What the hell does that mean? The expectation is for me to go to work tomorrow, but things can change. Absolutely they can. And if I don't show up, even though I said it was the expectation, can you really be mad at me? It was the expectation. The expectation. The expectation. I've heard that word a thousand times from Joe Shane. I think he's being very, 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 very punctual when using that word. My take on this overall. If pick number three is on the board, if the New England Patriots are actually open for business when it comes to trading down from number three, 
the Giants should be doing everything it can, they can as an organization, to move up, to go select the North Carolina quarterback, Drake May, because I do believe Jane Daniels is going number two. My quick little scouting report. Pros, he fits the bill. You close your eyes and you imagine what a professional quarterback looks like, that's Drake May, six foot four, 223 pounds. His playmaking, in my opinion, pops off the screen when you watch his tape. His arm talent, arm strength, ability to layer the football, attack the middle of the football field, is just as good as anybody in this class. And in my opinion, he's an extremely underrated athlete. Things I think he needs to work on. I think his footwork's a little bit sloppy sometimes. I think pressure in his face takes him out of his game a little bit. His eyes can go from down the field to focused on the O-line a little bit too much. Some accuracy concerns, not too worried about that. They put a lot on his plate last year. Um, I got him as a top five pick. I got him as QB2. I have my big board as Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison Jr., Joe Walt, Drake May, Malik Nate. So I got him as the fourth best player in this class, and I would love for him to be the quarterback of this football team. He was great for the Tar Heels the last two seasons. Better in 2022 than he was in 2023. More talent around him last year than this year. And I think that that kind of got to him a little bit. But that's not something that I'm extremely worried about. I believe that he is honestly a perfect fit for the Giants. The way he plays the position, the way he executes, how he has success is exactly how Brian Dable wants a quarterback to have success with the Giants. What would it cost? Well, I want to go back to this trade idea from Peter Schrager when he had his mock draft go out and he had the Giants moving from 6-4. to four. That included them giving up pick number 70 this year and a second-round pick in 2025, which tells me it would be more expensive for the Giants to move up from three to four, and you obviously, and you would have to give up more than this. So what do I think it would cost? Well, I went and looked at the trade chart, and I also factored in that teams are also going to be competing with the Giants to trade up to number three, like the Minnesota Vikings, maybe the Denver Broncos, or the Las Vegas Raiders. So what happens when there's competition? you got to present the best deal. And maybe it's a first this year, a second this year, and a first next year. That's a lot. But if you're getting a franchise quarterback, I'm doing that deal every single day of the week. Would you? Would you make this trade? You swap number three and number six, and you give up an additional two and a future first-round pick. Would you do it? A for accept, D for decline. Accept, accept, accept. I've been pretty consistent on this all offseason long if you identify that there is a franchise quarterback in this draft class you do whatever it takes to move up and I think Drake May is a franchise quarterback and if it costs me my second round pick this year and my first round pick next year to get a guy in there that can elevate this franchise I would do it because that is exactly what they need they need a franchise elevator under center and I believe Drake May can be that guy Make sure you are following me on social media at Marshall Green underscore on Twitter as well as at Marshall Green underscore on Instagram. We're going to be back with another video coming up on the channel in a couple of hours breaking down Joe Shane's pre-draft press conference. Had some pretty interesting quotes. That'll be in a couple hours. Enjoy this one. And if you did, hit that thumbs up icon for me.